Hello everyone, how are you all? Am I audible and visible to you all? Just comment it so I can see it and so that we can proceed further. Okay, uh, I will quickly start with my introduction only. Okay, as you all know, my name is Krishna Vaishnav and I, I have qualified NET in Code 17, that is Marketing Management. I have done my Master's in HR and Management. Apart from this, I am having 3 plus years of experience in educational and industrial sector. And as you all know, Laksha Batch is going on for June 2024. So, you can definitely go ahead and buy this course. It will be giving you 101% results, no doubt, okay? So, for paper 1 and commerce, you can buy it in just rupees 6199. And if you want to opt for only paper 1, if your paper 2 is not commerce, then you can go for 3599. So, you will be getting what? Live classes and recordings, well prepared PDF materials, PYQs classes, and subtopic wise quizzes, and anti based CBT mock test series. And guys, huh, you can watch the demo and then you can decide that you want to buy it or not. You can at least just uh, once watch the demo if you haven't till yet, okay? And you can download the app from the Play Store. You just need to type achieversadda.com.in. Okay? And uh, if you will joining this course, the timings will be 8 a.m. for commerce and 7 p.m. for paper 1. And as you all know, uh, today we are going to solve the unit 8 PYQs only, but part 2. Today we ha have solved some of the questions and some which are uh, have been left. So today we are going to solve this one. So just join and tell me about your studies, how it is going on, your studies. Have you start preparing notes? So I am waiting for the next 30 seconds and then we will be starting our session, okay? Good evening, Vanal. How are you? All good, great and fine. So this is our question one uh, coming from the inspection process and their types. So again, this was the question they have asked recently. I haven't seen any of the PYQ on this topic. So we are going to study it and just make a note of it. So next time, if you will be getting any question, you will be able to answer it. Okay. Good evening, Babita. How are you? You are saying answer is C. Okay. C is the correct one actually. No, let, let me check once. A is what? Purchase. 
Ajá, ok. Sí, sí, you are saying sí, ok. So, have you ever read about this term before, before this, like this Pokayoke term? Or this is the first time? Okay, one of the correct answer is C only. So first, uh, like we are going to understand all, all these form terms together and then we will be coming back to this question. So then we can able to connect that how the statements are matching to their respective uh, this topics. Okay, done. So first is what is Pokayoke actually? The concept is given by an industrial engineer named Shigo Shingo, okay, at Toyota Production System in Japan. He was working at Toyota Production Company in Japan. At that time, the person named Shigyo Shingo have introduced this concept. I read in Total Quality Management. I am good now, thank you. I am also good, Babita. Yeah, I am also read in that only. TQM only, I have read this. So, it was actually first named as what? Bakayoke, which means full proofing. But due to its negative connotation, uh, like uh, you know, na, in every different culture, in every different uh, uh, countries, there are different meanings of different words. So, uh, first the name it as a bakayoke, but due to its negative connotation, they renamed it what pokayoke, meaning what mistake proofing. So, it is having another names also, like we can call is that what error proofing fail safe device operation and full proofing now the second point you are seeing now fail safe device operation from this word only you can solve the question okay so we will be going again back to the question after understanding all the four concepts so you will be getting better clarity so pokayoke strategies eliminate human error error from your processes so that defects never get to customers meaning that your process are more productive and profitable so what happens now when the organization uh, produce any products so when the human uh, will be putting the raw material so it is possible that human can make uh, any of the error or some of the error in producing those products like they are uh, pushing anything towards the machine or they are uh, just doing anything so then they will be doing some of the errors but by applying this pokayoke strategies they eliminate the human error if any human error is there now so by applying this strategy they can eliminate it totally eliminate it okay till now is it clear to you Yes, it eliminates human errors, not machine errors, but it eliminates what human errors. It is specifically designed or made for the purpose of eliminating human errors only. The errors which basic uh, as humans made while producing any uh, product or service. Okay, so now uh, it is basically mistake proofing. Pokayoke strategies eliminate human error from your processes so that effects never get to customers. Why, why, now why they want to eliminate the human errors? Because if you will not eliminate the human errors, then it will be getting to the customers, okay? Like yesterday, uh, we have, uh, have seen that example of biscuits, now. So, uh, just imagine, if the biscuits are made, handmade, or they are, uh, like the humans are doing some manual work in, uh, uh, like, pro uh, producing that biscuits, so it will be getting to to whom to customers so they will never get to customers and that's why they use what pokayoke strategy and if you will using this strategy basically it will be uh, getting more productive and profitable now it will be having uh, two types okay that is preventive 
पोका योग के हैं डिफेंसिव पोका योग के ओके इन प्रिवेंटिव कम टू पॉइंट कंट्रोल मैथड एंड वार्निंग मैथड जस्ट रिमेम्बर दिस नेम एट लीस्ट सो इज द नेक्स्ट टाइम इफ दे विल आस्क वॉट आर द टू मैथर्स तो यू कैन टेल दैम वॉट इज वॉट इट इज प्रिवेंटिव एंड डिफेंसिव सो इन प्रिवेंटिव इट विल बी कंट्रोल मैथड एंड वार्निंग मैथड एंड इन डिफेंसिव इट विल बी कॉन्टेक्ट मैथड फिक्सड वैल्यू मैथड एंड मोशन स्टेप मैथड गेटिंग इट write it fast fast so you can remember it control method warning method for preventive and for d we can uh, make an uh, mnemonic for this na cw pcw for preventive that is p for preventive c for control method and v for warning method pcw just write it so you can you do not forget it in future and for this one we can make dcfm dcfm एफ एम सी डी एफ एम सी डी हाँ वी कैन मेक एज एफ एम सी डी ओके सो यू विल बी बेटर एबल टू रिमेम्बर इट नाउ वॉट डू यू अंडरस्टैंड दैट वॉट इज प्रिवेंटेशन बेस्ड पोकायोके एंड वॉट इज डिटेक्शन बेस्ड पोकायोके सो बेसिकली प्रिडिक्शन वी यूज फॉर अक्रेंस दैट थिंग्स मे हैपन इन द फ्यूचर दैट दिस एरर्स और दिस थिंग्स आर गोइंग टू बी हैपन इन फ्यूचर फॉर दैट वी विल बी यूजिंग प्रिवेंटेशन बेस्ड पोकायोके एंड Detection for occurrence happened. The things which are already happened for that we are going to use what detection based. Okay, okay, okay. Prevention is for future and detection is what already happened. So control or shutdown type. Okay, okay, okay. So when it may happen, like uh, even if you will be using your laptop, many many times you will be using using your phones or your your laptop. So you get an what uh, uh, like a warning you will be getting now that in next five seconds or the next ten seconds uh, your phone or your laptop is going to be shut down. So that is what prediction. That is what prevention best that it may control or shut down your laptop or uh, phone may be shut down. Okay. So that is uh, and your detection or oh, just imagine your laptop or phone already switched off or it uh, it got shut down. So that is what detection it already happened actually. Okay. Prevent the uh, so what prevention based does it actually prevent the error from occurring. Okay. And in detection alarm or alert when the error has occurred. Uh, you can see there are many factories where sometimes uh, fire uh, got na so in that case the alarm will start ringing or the alert machine will start get ringing that the error has already occurred the fire has already been occurred in your organization so now that is detection they are giving us the signals that it has happened okay all clear till now So we are having some examples. So from this, you will be able to understand it more. Prevention from error occurring. Yes, PCW. Okay, PCW. And what we have made this for FMCD. Okay, PWC and FMCD. Just remember this way. So what is the characteristics of the POCA? Okay, it should be quick. Okay, it must provide quick feedback as. and assist in acknowledging mistakes at the origin just imagine your organization is about to fire so it must give give us the quick feedback that is this is about to happen or this is already happened it should be clear the machines which are ringing or the warnings we are getting should be clear it should not be mismatched with the other departments that this is going to happen in the uh, hr department and the warning it showing about what finance department it should be clear and should, it should be simple okay it should not be very much complex so that we are not able to understand what the warnings are coming what the signs are coming we should be able to understand the signals which are giving while happening any of the instances or circumstances yes okay now just take the example of lift the lift doors have sensors that reopen them when any object comes between them okay so that is what pokayoke technique cables have specific symbols and colors to prevent interchangeability it is commonly used in audio visual cam, uh, cables used in computers another example is what sim card a diagonal cut at the edge of the sim card signifies the correct direction to insert it next is what pen drive the black line inside the pen drive its respective port help plug it in quickly
hair dryer like hair dryers have a safety feature uh, like if you have uh, once or man if you will be using hair dryer frequently now then you will know that there is a automatically uh, button which uh, so your hair dryer will be uh, like uh, going back to uh, power off uh, situation when the it got overheat so that are basically what prevention and detection based poka okay techniques till now all clear any doubt till here uh, just ask me or not then to we are going to proceed further i hope all the points clear to you yes panalan babita do you have any doubt till now now we have done the uh, this point now okay okay now three more are remaining that is source inspection variable inspection and attribute inspection so let's understand that and then we are going to solve the question clear okay so what is, what do you think what is source inspection basically basically uh, when we like produce the products na so there is a control tool that is called as what source inspection it is a quality control tool used by organization to check the conformity of a product or assemble before it is shipped to the purchaser for example by today uh, by to, uh, by end of this month you are going to uh, like um, what example we can take uh, okay you are going to ship uh, a port okay uh, or a laptop or something to your customer so before supplying it to yeah comments actually shown let so before supplying the product or service to your customers you will doing the source inspection so that the customer will not receive the defective product basically the customer is not going to receive the uh, defective product because the company or industry already have done what source inspection got it you can prevent issues later in the value stream by making sure product is conformal at the supplier now what is product conformity actually we are using this word conformity conformity in this source inspection so basically uh, for the safety of your products for the reliability of the products for the uh, reliability and quality of consumer goods it is the degree to which a product meets the relevant standards and regulation established by industry government and other authoritative bodies for example when we use the uh, when the company make the what uh, baby products like just take the example of johnson's baby so when they are making the baby products na they need to uh, like add that to the product conformity rules they have set and by whom the industry or the government that it is uh, made for the children's above five so it should be in the good quality there should be not uh, sensation in their uh, their skin while applying those products it should be safe while applying to their body and should it should be reliable the parents can trust totally on on that products they are using for their children so that is basically what product conformity so in source inspection we only check this that this all the products are safe reliable and have a good quality before uh, passing it to consumers getting it all clear na till now after this we are having inspection by attributes now by inspection by attitude attributes what we can understand that every product and each product have different attributes different attributes different features are attached to them like uh, if we are using a lotion it will be having a different texture in that if we are uh, buying an oil it will be having a different texture if we will buying a fairness cream or a beauty cream it again it will be having a different attribute or different feature or different texture if we will buying a face powder compact face powder again it will be having what an 
different attribute so what the companies do they inspect all the attributes of their products either determines whether an attribute is conforming or non conforming to a specific requirement for example in this they are taking the overall things of a product which are related to the standards and regulation established by industry and government okay in the source inspection but in the inspection by attribute they are checking uh, individual quality of an product not the overall quality they are checking the individual quality of different products that it is okay or not okay it is an acceptance sampling inspect inspection basically if the texture is right for the lotion the texture is right for the hair oil then only we are going to uh, going to okay that product or we are not going to okay that product either we are going to, uh, going to accept the sample or we are not going to accept the sample okay this means that the number of non conforming units or the number of defects in a sample determines the acceptability of the inspection lot for example uh, you have a uh, taken the inspection of a lot in which there are uh, six products are there so out of six four products are were defective so uh, now what the company are going to do they are going to uh, like reject the whole lot because the four products are already defective so it is possible that the other two problems are uh, other two products are also not reliable so again they need to make it to the specific requirement each product satisfy their standards or not yes exactly okay and this one is was uh, last one is what variables data related to character characteristics that are measured such as weight and length now for example you have uh, we are having lotion and we are ha having uh, oil so what do you think uh, the weight of the moisturizer will be different and the weight of the oil will be different okay and the length of their products in which packaging they are coming are they coming in the round shape bottles or are they in coming in the oval shape or the triangle square like company use different different uh, that things so it all uh, all depends on that things okay got it till now yes okay very good attribute data relate to characteristic that are assessed on a pass fail basic basically in uh, inspection by attribute we have used what okay or not okay but in this we are using what pass or fail basis usually by visual inspe inspection so by uh, just look at the product we can inspect it that it is defective uh, piece or it is a good piece example presence or absence of usually identified defects such as scratches for example on the oil bottle or on the lotion bottle you are having what scratches so by seeing that thing only or the labels are not placed correctly okay so by only seeing uh, usually you can see this and you can either accept it or reject it variable inspection offers complete control over the manufacturing process with the variables data trends are seen allowing for corrective action to be taken long before the product reaches the reject level so in this variable inspection what happens now even so while manufacturing only they are taking uh, they are doing what inspection so before uh, they uh, like go to the final stage and the officer uh, will be rejecting it on the initial process only they will be uh, taking what the corrective actions and at that point only they are going to make it correct so at the final point they are not going to reject by the inspection officers okay identify defective pcs yes babita so now all we have discussed all the points now we are going to what question and now i think we will be able to connect that what this four statements are saying so uh, answer is what c so let's see the uh, uh, one by one is it's what second source inspection so operating operator doing his job properly and self check at the point production or purchase yes we have re, uh, we have just done this now source inspection right Uh, second is what B is fourth. That class uh, that is attribute inspection that classify item as being either good or defective. We have just read this line now. Either it is good or bad uh, or okay or not okay. That is what again attribute inspection. And then after that comes C. C ka one pokai okay. Assisted by a tire use of checklist and control such as fail safe device that ensures production of a good unit every time. So if you remember in first page only we have uh, in the second point we have read what fail safe device operation. 
So same thing was written in the statement. Assisted by tired use of a checklist and control such as fail safe device that ensure production of a good unit every time. And last one is what D. Uh, that is variable inspection. Classification of items as following continuum scales such as dimension or strength. Now what is dimension or st uh, strength? Uh, that is basically uh, there I think uh, weight and height and all these things. Data variable we have done now. It's talking about data variable, they are uh, their height, their uh, weight and all these things. Now is it clear to you? Still if you are having any doubt, ask me right now. I will be solving solving you in, at the point, at the spot only. Direct statement given, yes. Direct statements are given but still we need to connect it. Okay, now we will be proceeding to our second question. Okay, second question is uh, coming from the part, uh, uh, scheduling part. Okay, what is question asking to us? The objective of scheduling is to allocate and prioritize, prioritize demand to available facilities. The scheduling decision ranges from years, minute, hours, day. Arrange the following scheduling decisions accordingly. So you have to arrange it actually. Any guesses for this question? Any answers? Even if you will giving the wrong answers right now, na, it's totally okay. Because next time when you will be solving this question or the question related to this topic, you will be uh, going to give the right answer only. So right now to, you can give the wrong answers also because we are humans, we cannot be perfect, we are not machines, we are not computers. Should I reveal the answer guys? Where is E? <laughs> that is for confusion part guys. So uh, E is not there in all the above options. So you can basically easily eliminate option D. So now you have only three options left. Banal is saying C and Babita is saying B. Okay, the correct answer is B actually. We will be going to start from capacity planning and will be going accordingly. So let's see basically what is scheduling. scheduling. So basically when we make a project, first we make the schedules like what task we are going to do, how we are, are organized the whole project, what will be what will be the time of delivery delivery we are going to do to the customer, what are the milestones, what are the achievements we are going to learn from this project in a predefined timeline. Oh, Chala Kanti, yes. No issue, Banal. Right now, we are practicing now, so we can give the wrong answers. No issues. No one is uh, going to give you marks right now, but you are only learning. So it's totally acceptable, even you are going the wrong answer. Now, basically, a schedule is a timetable. Okay, now, like how we used to make our timetable uh, when we were in our boards, uh, in our 12th or 10th classes, we are have we are having our board exam. So we used to make the proper schedule now that we are going to wake up at by six or by five, and which ways we are ended um, ending up by waking up at nine only. But that was we are going to do when we were kids. Even some elders also do. Uh, I know some of the persons who, ha who are still uh, like make the timetable and follow that. So a schedule is a timetable showing the forecast start and finish date for activities or events within a project program or portfolio. So basically when we are going to make a schedule, everything will be pre-decided. Okay, at what time we are going to complete it, at what time we are going to start it, how many days it will take, how many hours it will take, how many labors will be needed, what technology will be needed, all the things will be done here only. Okay.
getting it till now. Ma'am, give, give, give some timetable to us, ma'am, to cover everything in management. So, Banal, basically, now, uh, two types of people are there. Either they are, are the like early birds who you who love to you uh, used to wake up early, or either there will be what night owls who uh, love to wake up uh, late in the nights. So, uh, it totally depends on you that what time you want to study first. First, uh, identify that thing. Okay, if you will identify that thing now, guys, just give me two minutes now. Someone is ringing bell, just two minutes. You just read this topic. I am coming back now. Okay, guys, someone has came actually. Am I visible now and audible? Yeah, yeah. Okay, huh? Banal, so first you will decide that. And then after that, just divide your paper one and paper two respectively. And if you are having a good approach on paper one now, like you have already covered all the points where you are getting good marks in paper one. So just reduce your timing to study for paper two. Give more time to paper two. Read more for paper two. Uh, like because these are different words. Uh, they are asking deep questions. So uh, like increase your reading part. Increase your understanding part and your conceptual part. Clear now? So in that way, uh, like uh, you can cover your everything in management. Like uh, when I used to prepare, I basically used to study five hours for, for management. Even we are management students, even we have done our uh, MBA, Masters and BBA and all the syllabus we have already done. Still, they ask different question uh, because in Masters, to, uh, we will uh, normally having what? Uh, essay type questions we need to just write it and we are getting the number but in this that's mcqs they will ask you and they will be confusing you why just to know how much um, how how much conceptual clarity you are having uh, on your subject that's why Uh, and okay, I will be taking a separate session for your doubts like uh, uh, your timetable, how much time you need to uh, give for uh, paper two, and what you can like uh, avoid if you do not want to study, what po points you can avoid and what are some of the important points you should study no, ma uh, no matter what happens. That to every time auntie is going to ask you. Got it?
yes need to solve more and more pi cubes and yes so ha when you studying uh, five to uh, four to five hours for management now like your paper two in that time don't do your pi cubes and mcq for your pi cubes and mcq uh, just uh, take a separate time one hour you can give every day so you will be having more accuracy on your uh, while solving your pyqs and mcqs and uh, uh, pick a time like uh, there will be two slots for uh, our uh, normally our exam that is one is uh, morning slot and one is evening slot so just took uh, uh, your time from that slot only either from the morning sl uh, slot take one hour or from the evening slot take one hour so uh, and keep your mind fresh at the time so you will be having a uh, more corrective things while doing uh, those questions you will be able to think more okay and no issues i will be going to take a separate session and whatever doubts you are having for paper 2 we are going to talk about uh, those uh, doubts so just make a list of your doubts and while we will be taking that session you can ask me one by one and we will be discussing more in detail okay okay now uh, till now to we have done na so first is what capacity planning so what do you think what is capacity planning basically it is the process of identifying how many hours a project or task will require determining whether or not your team has the available bandwidth to complete it and then coordinating that work for maximum efficiency okay as the name implies the process can be split into two parts capacity and planning so basically it is to identify the capacity planning we use basically to identify what that how uh, a project will take how many hours like just uh, uh, just take an example you are working on a project and every day you are going to contribute two hours to your project okay uh, you are uh, giving what two hours every day to your project and total in total you are going to contribute what 10 hours in 5 days okay so your project will be completing in that town and you can uh, like round it off now uh, that uh, i will be uh, giving 3 hours every day or 4 hours every day or i have decided to complete the project in 2 days only so day 1 i will be going to give 5 hours and day 2 i am also giving no issues banal uh, i am going to uh, guide you know do not worry do not panic so uh, you can decide uh, as per your choice like uh, as you have decided i am going to do the project in two days only so five days uh, for uh, day one and five hours for day two you have uh, like uh, distributed like this so it uh, totally depend on the your team or the available resources you are having on these things now just uh, look at this four points now 1 2 3 4 the capacity planning process is crucial in project management knowledge area such as so in what uh, what uh, major areas are there in which we are going to apply capacity planning that is resource management uh, what the resources we are needing how much we are going to need it in what quality what quantity like there will be sub standard quality there will be standard quality so which quality we are using are we using the finest quality of the world are we using the medium quality or are we using the lowest quality for making a product or services now time management how much time each day you, you are going to contribute to your project either it is 2 hours 3 hours 4 hours full day full night it will depend on your project team management how your team is going to do work with all the things who like we are having five team members so which team member is going to do what one is from production department one is from finance department so production department uh, individual will be doing what he will be uh, procuring the raw material he will be guiding his uh, subordinates that you need to buy this uh, quality of raw material in this quantity uh, the finance person will be doing all the calculations that resource time team work management yes and fourth is what work management now finally you have done all the three 
uh, this things resource time team you have done very well now you have to divide the work equally in different different persons like the production department will be checking the production thing the time department will be checking is is they are doing it on proper time the resource management department will be checking are the all the resources are properly or there is any lack of any resources so this is how you can done the capacity planning got it any doubt still here all clear i think now second is what aggregate planning basically aggregate planning we are going to do for from 3 to 18 months basically uh, minimum 3 months will be there for aggreg aggregate planning and maxi maximum it will be up to the 18 months got it yeah so the process of developing analyzing and maintaining a preliminary approximate schedule of the overall operation of an organization aggregate planning is an attempt to balance capacity and demand in such a way that cost are minimized okay now just take an example of this automobile sector they are producing what cars they are producing cars now uh, the machine they are using for manufacturing this cars have only capacity uh, up to 100 kg uh they uh, like uh, once in a time they can only uh, use up to 100 kg materials on on this machine if if they are going to use more than 100 kg of weights on their machines the machines will go malfunction the machines will not pro uh, work properly okay so you have to keep it in check and demand uh, and that is what capacity we have talked about now what is demand uh, demand for example uh, your machine is able to uh, weigh the weight up to 100 kg but you are just putting the uh, weight of 80 kg 20 kg is again lacking in your machine uh, machine so it should be in alignment that what is the capacity and what is the demand so that the cost are minimized for example if you are not using 100 kg of the weight every time so the cost are not going to minimize because 20 kg are still left there is a more capacity you can use in that machine but as you are not using it in the future obviously you will be having the cost for that things okay aggregate planning is the process of a uh, of developing an approximate schedule that details how an organization will operate over a particular period typically uh, we have already done this so okay so uh, here are giving some definitions now aggregate planning is equals to in intermediate term aggregate plan covers a period of 3 to 18 months we have done this foundation of for future short range type planning okay this is short range type of planning because it is only from 3 to 18 months master production schedule is equals to the aggregate plan disaggregate okay the this mps we are going to study in the next page begin with the determination of demand and current capacity we are having in our organization get it till now everything clear here it is what is master scheduling now basically it is the heart of production planning and controlling if we will not going to do master scheduling we will be not able to uh, or do it our project with the full efficiency and uh, full 100% determination so in mps in the master production schedule or in the master scheduling we are having everything under one roof like what will be the calendar what is the shift time uh, what will be the planning time capacity planning will be involved in this what will be the financial consideration how much money we are going to need what are the type of product characteristic that is raw material we are going to need for making that product what will be the production policies what are the capacity concerns that how much your machines can uh, able to produce in one slot or how much uh, they are not able to produce in one slot what are the planned orders like which raw material or input you need to put first and then it will be going on sequence what will be the demand if you are producing this product right now what will be the demand in the futures also what will be the availability of your inventory like initial inventory initial production subcontracted quantities all the thing will be co covered in your master production scheduling for a project for a particular project 
it in okay basically the master scheduling interface or uh, connect with which department your marketing your capacity your production and your distribution getting it all clear any doubt ask me right now and how just remember this one more point that it provides senior management with the ability to determine whether the business plan and its strategic objective will be achieved or it will be not achieved achieved okay and this is what short term scheduling in master scheduling all the other uh, things will be covering like capacity production distribution basically master as as from the name we can understand it is a master uh, scheduling it is a master planning we are covering everything in this scheduling okay now what is short term scheduling basically uh, short term schedules translate capacity decisions aggregate planning and master schedules into a job sequence and specific assignments of personal materials and machinery so we have done all the three schedulings okay previous three in this it will be aggregating all the three and this point also all together okay it will be uh, like translating into the job sequence and specific assignments like how much personal materials and machinery all together will be needed okay for all the projects so we, we are having some short term scheduling examples like hospital is outpatient treatments and operating rooms in university instructor and classroom in factory production and purchase so uh, as just imagine uh, that you are teaching in a university okay so uh, for what time the class is going to happen what you are going to teach in class how much time you will be interacting with your students i am facing network issues ma'am just refresh or just try to change your network if you are having uh, your parents phone na you can uh, take their hotspot na just borrow their net any which ways so they are not using full net borrow from your parents or your elder siblings younger siblings from anyone you can borrow it so in university while you will be taking a classroom it will be all pre decided that you will be going to teach for 2 hours 3 hours whole day what topic you are going to discuss today so it is what short term basically for one classroom you are not going to plan all the things in advance if you will uh, you will take 2 hours you can uh, obviously plan it in the same way uh, in hospital there will be operating rooms and their outpatient treatment so it is already pre decided by the doctor the, normally if you have vis visit visit the uh, hospital or doctor's house uh, like we we all have already visited it once in our lifetime to till now to so there is a specific mentioned uh, outside their room that we, uh, the doctor will be checking from morning 8 am to uh, 2 pm in the noon on uh, then from 3 uh, pm in the noon to 7 pm in the evening like that they will be having their scheduling so that is only short term there is uh, like not too much things are there in this till now all clear so that we can go to next question so it it is from the mean actually what is the major assumptions we make when computing a mean from grouped data so guys if you have uh, done the properties of mean na you at least know one thing that it only talk about the midpoint equal thing class everything like this there is no such thing like all value are discrete or each class contains exactly the same number of values it is not possible okay it should not it, sh it cannot be like 2223333 okay and uh, no value occurs more than once uh, it can occur it is possible that in mean every value can occur more than once so what is the assumption that every value in a class is equal to the midpoint 
so now let's take an example of here the class midpoint is the midpoint of a class interval okay the class flag is the value that represent the class interval for example if you have a class interval from 10 to 20 now then the class midpoint is 10 plus 20 divided by 2 you will be getting the answer as 15 getting it so that's why every value in a class is equal to the midpoint like uh, if you will calculate from the upper side of your mean data or you will be calculating from the yes b is the correct answer babita or if you will be calculating from the lower side of your data you will be getting the equal midpoints of your mean okay so mean is basically what the average of the given numbers uh, we are going to what sum of observation divided by number of observation ba basic thing very basic thing and don't worry we are going to do the properties of mean median mode in separate class like uh, uh, when we are going to when we are going to study statics part full na then we are going to study all these properties feature advantage disadvantage getting it now fourth question very simple question but again uh, confusing question that fi fixing the zero date is important step in establishing a project the question is asking to you that in which step you will be uh, fixing your date, your zero date. Before uh, proceeding for your project, you will be deciding a date that will be called was zero date. So it will be in which step. Give me answer fast, fast. B for this, you are saying B for this or that was so for previous question. No? For this, what is your answer for question fourth? Should I reveal the answer? C, you are saying definition step. Okay, give, give a fresh try again. Okay, let me devalue. Na? The answer for this question is D. That is last step. In the last step of your project, you are going to uh, fix the zero date. Now, how come last step? Let's see. See, zero date of a project means a date is fixed from which implementation of the project begins. It is a starting point of incurring cost. The project completion period is counted from the zero date. Now, why it is last step? Because you have taken all the you you have taken the preliminary secondary definition steps. Uh, like a client has came to you, and the client told you that he need an software, uh, software, or an app. He need an app, app, app or software. So they have talked first. They have first. They will be having what informal meeting. They will then they will be meeting formally. Then they will be discussing what will be the cost for this uh, for developing this app or or for this software. How much time will be required? How much personal will be required? What machines you are going to use? What technology are you going to? Use? All the things are discussed. Now finally. The day when the client is going to pay some advance, some down payment to the organization, that will be the date on which your last step will be there. Actually, the last step will be the first step before making your project and that is what zero date. From the zero date, you will be starting your project because you have received what down payment. Got it? So, zero date means the date of issue of letter of intent or issue of work order. So, basically the organization have received the amount from the client. Now, the organization is going to do what? They are going to issue a work order to their, uh, to their uh, employees that uh, we are having this app. 
uh, and we are going to we are having this uh, app query uh, query which we need, uh, we finally have converted into lead and now we need to develop this app or this software and the main uh, upper management or the upper level the person who have contacted with the client will be issuing what work order and from that work order they are going to do what uh, start their project and that work order only from means what zero date or date of signing contract the date on which you signed the contract the date on which you have received your payment whichever is earliest and shall be considered as effective date of the contract all clear now what are the pre project activities should be completed uh, before zero date like before uh, coming to the zero date what should be the some activities which needed to be done that uh, which kind of project or product it is what will be the uh, plant capacity is our plant is our company will be able to produce that app or software or not what will be the technical help we will be needing what will be the selection of site like we will be uh, like for the app so we can uh, like develop it in our laptop only so we can uh, do is uh, do it in our office only but uh, just imagine we are um, uh, crafting an uh, train so for that we will be having a site and selection of a survey of soil plot etc like if you are using uh, producing any oil or something so we will be doing that also manpower planning and recruiting key personnel like for example we are not having any person till now which will be able to develop app so for that also we need to recruit someone and cost and finance scheduling how how much cost it will occur to the company and how much profits we are able to gain it all th these things will be decided and then zero date came on this we are going to start our very fresh project got it all clear or some doubt is there now we are having one last question uh, and this question is from unit 6 actually i have kept it here because uh, you know, in unit 6 part this question somehow left so i have kept it in this session okay just comment that all clear till now so that we can proceed to our final question Girls, all clear till now? Or do you have any doubt? Ask me. Otherwise, we can move forward with the question number five. Clear now? Okay. Now, give me the answer of this question. Any guesses, or you can choose your favorite option in this option. Your favorite. Pick up. Which we always want to pick. all of the above or none of the above or more we can have somewhere above <laughs> anywhere above like the whole options which we like d yeah answer is d only basically none of them are the combination strategies okay i will show you the chart and you will get in clear cut idea c in the corporate level strategies basically we are having four types that that is what stability strategies expansion strategies retrenchment strategies and combination strategy now the question has asked to us that what is the combination strategy so the combination strategy will be what your simon simultaneous sequential or combination of both so both the names were not given in the question so that's why the answer is what none of the above in stability what will become no change strategy basically in no change what we will do like our organization currently working in that way only the organization is going to work if any updations is there in the market in the international market or in the global market 
uh, company will not going to adopt it they will be work in the same pattern they are working from the uh, past years post proceed with caution strategies in this if we going to change our product or services if we going to change our the target marketed like previously we are targeting only younger generation now we are going to target our elder generation also so first we will be take a pause we will think that is this decision right or is this decision wrong and after that we will be proceeding with the decision which we want to take and profit strategy is basically uh, there is a new product to in the market recently so now your organization also started making this uh, that product because that is newly introduced market and that product is not widely available so you can gain the profit by uh, making that uh, product and selling that product and the demand is also high of that product or service like in the covid time many uh, many uh, institute institutions started online teaching so what have they done they have uh, opted for this profit strategies because that was so much in demand during the covid times now in expansion again uh, concentration will be there integration diversification cooperation and utilization will be there in retrenchment turnaround divestment and liquidation will be there and in combination what happens actually you can uh, use stability expansion and retrenchment strategy all together that will be what simultaneously like uh, you will be using all this strategy together and in combine uh, or in sequential what will be uh, what will happen you will be using this strategies step by step for example first you have used stability then you have used retrenchment and then you have used what expansion and in combination what you will be using in simultaneously and sequentially also you are using both the way around and on this corporate level strategy again we will be having a separate session because this strategies we need to uh, like learn in uh, detail we need to study this topics in detail we need to know about each and every strategy very clearly we should have a clear cut definition in our mind so that in exam we will be able to answer the question correctly because in every attempt you can see one question from this topic for sure no doubts all clear stability expansion yeah and then combination so just remember the names that what strategy will come in stability in expansion and detachment and in combination so that uh, the questions if next time the like this time the uh, question have been asked about combination maybe next time they will ask about what stability so if they will ask about stability then there will be no change post proceed and profit strategy you can easily give the answer get it all clear so with this question guys uh, i am ending today's session and tomorrow we are going to meet again uh, with two units are left only so we are going to complete the uh, remaining two units and then we are going to proceed with june uh, pyqs of 2023 okay we are going to do june pyqs of 2023 and i will be giving you all the pdfs after the remaining two sessions so you can make your notes or you can revise it and how you guys you can do mm -hmm. one more thing uh, like now uh, we have just done what is expansion and retrenchment studies we have read the names now just google all these strategies that what does strategies really mean any which ways i am going to teach you in the further uh, further sessions but for uh, your knowledge for your understanding only you can just google it and you can just uh, like uh, give a read of 5 minutes so that it will retain in your mind in your internal memory it will going to be retain okay okay now bye bye happy studies uh, we will meet tomorrow okay